Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be talking about the most important aspect of your readiness when it comes to being a prepared civilian, a warrior, and just a person in general. And that is your fitness. You know, we hear it all the time, especially from Grand Thumbs saying, you know, get fit or die. Uh, but what does that even mean in the context of being like a prepared uh, citizen or, you know, warrior in general? So when I refer to someone as a warrior, what does that mean? Well, by the definition, it means as someone who is preparing or is conducting war a soldier. While part of me uh, agrees with this definition, I was a soldier in my previous life in the 75th Ranger Regiment where we prepared for war every single day, whether it be through rehearsals, planning for different stuff, or preparing our bodies you know, through PT to meet the rigors of war. But since getting out, I try to keep myself to the same standard that I was at when I was in, at least close to it. I go to the gym nearly every single day. I'm here at the range tra training with my firearms and through my other job at Milsom West, I'm going out to the field and putting into practice a lot of the small unit tactics I learned when I was in. Now, being a warrior is definitely not all a physical thing. It is mostly a mental, uh, but usually if someone is mentally strong, the physically strong thing usually comes along with it. Not all the time, but because I have seen dudes, you know, who go out to Milsom West with me who are jack specimens who fall out of the ruck, or if they do make the ruck infill, they don't have the mental fortitude to complete the follow-on mission and just want to stay there and go to sleep. At a recent event, I actually had a guy who was jacked, had all the latest and greatest night vision, give me a little bit of a hissy fit because I asked him once we completed the ruck infill to get up and do the follow-on mission late into the night and he didn't want to get up versus the guy next to him who was like this little scrawny guy who had a duct tape thermal on top of his AK who was totally down. Um, which of those two guys is the warrior? You tell me. Duct tape thermal guy doesn't give a fuck. So a lot of guys ask me, what do I do to keep myself physically fit? And I am not the most jacked guy out there, but I do keep myself healthy and fit enough to complete the job. I'm very hesitant to give you guys a direct program of what you should do because I am not a physical trainer, but I have been working out for a while and what I've been doing got me through my time in the military and is keeping me healthy and able to do stuff I do now. So what I think you guys should focus on is your GPP, your general physical preparedness. And the program that I use, I am not affiliated with them in any way. They have no idea who I am, but I have been using the same program before the army, during my time in the military, and what I'm doing now. The program I'm following is through a company called Power Athlete. Uh, it used to be called CrossFit Football back in the day, but that program, I like it a lot because it focuses a lot on strength and it has a lot of conditioning in it. So you're gonna be starting off with a strength portion, which is usually one of the big lifts. I always think that guy should focus on you know, the big barbell lifts. I think it is a good way to get generally strong. And then after you complete the lift, you're gonna do some type of Metcon, which is a kind of a CrossFit style workout. And that's gonna get your cardio up so you're able to perform the task while also being strong. Now I pay for the subscription, which I follow on an app, which I like because it takes a lot of the work out of it but if you know what you're doing you can definitely program for yourself and especially if you know what you need to be working on what I really like about this program is that it has a couple days off during the week and I can do kind of like my accessory work on those days now when I was in the military um, I really didn't focus on running or long distance running pretty much all the running that I did was sprints which I added in in the off days but I was blessed being a 6'3 Astartes so I have long legs and long distance runs never really uh, troubled me just through the GPP and the cardio during the Metcons and those sprints got me through the timed five mile runs, which we had a 40 minute standard on. Now, some guys who are not built like me needed to focus more on those long distance runs. So it is important to know your specific body type and what you need to work on. So what I'm telling you guys that I do is not necessarily what you need to do. So currently I pay for a gym membership and do these workouts at that gym, but the most optimal setup is having a home gym. Uh, I have a home gym. It is currently in storage because I have a house being built, which I should have access to in about a month here. But I do have stuff around the house here. I have a kettlebell, I have a sledgehammer, some dumbbells. So if I can't make it to the gym that day, I still have stuff to do here at the house. Another thing that I like to do, and if you've been following the channel for a while now, you'll know this, I like stress shoots. So I like to incorporate 
some type of physical fitness to my shooting drills, which we're gonna show you here in a second, because I do like to get your, it gets your heart rate up quite a bit and it adds a little level of stress to your shooting and it lets you know where you're at, you know, if you're under some type of stress, um, how accurate you're gonna be and if you can make those shots. All right guys, so forgive the change in lighting here. We had some technical difficulties the last time we tried filming this, but we're all squared away now. Right now I have a stress shoot set up, which is largely kind of based on something you might see at Finish Brutality or a similar match. Right here I have a kettlebell. I'm gonna be standing here next to the kettlebell on go, I'm gonna make three hits on the very far steel target with my rifle, once from the standing, once from the kneeling, and once from the prone. Once I make those three hits, I'm going to drop my rifle, swing the kettlebell, and throw it as far as I can down the hill. I'm gonna to go to where the kettlebell stops rolling, and I'm gonna make the same three hits again, one from the standing, one from the kneeling, and one from the prone. Once I get to the bottom of the hill where the tire is, I'm gonna drop my rifle and I'm gonna draw my pistol and make three hits on those two steel targets that you see down there. Once I make those three hits, I'm going to holster my pistol and I'm going to flip the tire. Then I'm gonna to go to where the tire lands and make another three hits on one of those two steel targets down there. And I'm gonna do that until I reach the bottom. So for this drill, the guns I'm gonna be using, starting off here with the rifle, I have my Blackout Defense Quantum DTL. Absolutely love this rifle, it's really handy. It's got a 13.9 inch barrel with a pin and welded flash hider right there. And one kind of uh, interesting thing about this rifle is it doesn't have a forward assist. I'm not really sure if an AR-15 really needs one. I prefer that they have forward assist, but um, it is what it is. As you can see, I'm using this Hall Sun Ames on this Overbore Systems riser, which I really like on AR-15s, with a primary arms magnifier. As far as the handgun that I'm using, I'm using what you see here. This is the Apollo 11 from Live Free Armory. They're actually the sponsor of today's video. And what this thing is, is essentially a budget-friendly uh, 2011 type of pistol. Um, when I say budget-friendly, it's still coming in around $900, which is still kind of expensive, but for a 2011 style handgun, that's a pretty good price. And so far, this pistol has been perfectly reliable, I have a couple hundred rounds through this thing, and it's been doing good. As you can see, it has a Picatinny rail on the bottom here, so you can attach any of your flashlights. It has an optic cut right here. Um, this is for an RMSC style red dot. I don't have one of those things, so we're just gonna be using the, um, the iron sights here. It actually comes with some pretty decent irons on it. it has a tritium front on it, which I do enjoy. And as far as the magazines go, it does take your standard staccato style magazine, so it has 17 plus one, so you have quite a bit of firepower. Um, and this thing will fit in any of your staccato style holsters as long as it's the same style pistol. As far as the ammunition that I'm using today, I have 124 grain factory select ammo from Badlands Ammunition, as well as 55 grain 5.56. Both are from Badlands Ammunition. If you guys want a discount from them, use code BLUEGENE at checkout. It gets you a percentage off there and it helps out the channel. So if you want some quality ammunition, go check out Badlands Ammunition. I'd also like to mention Infinity Targets. They have a discount code for you guys. If you go to the website and use code BLUEGENE15 at checkout, it gets you 15% off some awesome rubber self-healing targets. All you need to reset these things is get some white spray paint and you're good to go. So go check out Infinity Targets. All right guys, here goes nothing. I forgot my timer, so I'll put a little timer at the bottom of the screen here. So in three, two, one, Should also be noted that it is an 80 pound kettlebell. Right. Accurate today.
Oh. Not sure if I made it on that one. Absolutely zero roll. Just rain this morning. Oh God. Starting to get a little fatigued. Dang. Almost there. It's a good toss. My mic. Done with the rifle. Oh I think that was it.
One more flip. All right. Well, that was pretty entertaining. Um, did pretty good. Actually, I did better at the beginning at the further distance away I was from the target uh, with a rifle because I started getting smoked about halfway through uh, tossing that 80 pound kettlebell. And towards the end there, I started some, missing some shots and I could really feel my heart rate getting to me. And I absolutely love these types of drills. Uh, I love working out and I love shooting. So being able to combine both of those, I absolutely love it. Should this be your you know, main form of training? I would say not. This is a good thing to add in to your training program that you already have or whatever you got going on. I would say to focus more on the fundamentals of shooting and you know actually going to the gym and working on your fitness. But you know if you ever want to test yourself, try something like this. It's a really good way to see you know how accurate you are when you're under stress. All right, guys. So bottom line, this video pretty much what I'm trying to get across is you have to be fit. Um, in a multitude of different facets. Go running, go rucking, go to the gym, lift some weights, do pull-ups, all that kind of stuff. Because if you consider yourself to be an able-bodied and prepared citizen who is you know, ready to take up arms if you need to, are you gonna be either an asset or are you gonna be a liability? But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Gene Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find school shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also guys, if you wanna get involved with the channel a little bit more directly, Patreon, it's a great way to support the channel, helps me buy guns, gear, ammo, all the kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel, and it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.